Hey, welcome back to Blanchy Talks Watches. Today for review, we have the Heimdaller Sea Shepherd Tuna Can. Now, for those of you familiar with tuna watches, this is a homage to the Seiko Tuna. Okay, for the size of this watch, I'll actually measure on camera so you can see how it is done. So the diameter of this watch, excluding the crown, is uh, just over 47 millimeters. And the lug to lug is just under 44. Quite a short lug to lug on this watch for how wide it is, which does help with the comfort of the watch. 47 millimeters is quite large, but 44 millimeters lug to lug is quite short. So it does wear quite comfortably. As for the thickness, it is just over 14, so it is a bit of a chunky watch. The bezel is 120 click, and the bezel insert is ceramic. The bezel itself is quite stiff i have tried to loosen this up a bit washing it in soapy water as suggested by the manufacturer and on the forms but really it's it's a two-handed operation to turn this bezel as i struggle here this isn't put on at all it is quite difficult and to be honest slightly painful on your fingers to Rotate it so you want to make sure you get the last click properly and don't go one over. You don't have to go again. You can see the dents in my fingers from how much force I had to put in to actually turn that. So you've no hope of turning that once it's on the wrist. I suppose for a dive watch that, that can be handy. I mean, you can be damn sure it's not going to rotate while you're underwater. Um, the shroud, this part here, is supposed to reduce the risk of that happening as you can see a large portion of the bezel is protected by the shroud honestly with how stiff this bezel is you don't need that at all it wouldn't be turning anyway so the sapphire crystal has an anti-reflective coating on it it is a domed crystal not a huge amount of dome but it is there and you can see from that angle actually the chapter ring is very tall so there's quite a distance from the crystal down to the hands. It just adds a depth to the watch that you don't see on many others. So this watch was available either on the bracelet that I have it here or a silicone strap. As I've said in previous videos, if you're given the option, I'd always recommend going for the, the bracelet. And you can pick up a silicone strap or a leather strap anywhere. It's always harder to find a bracelet that suits the watch. Bracelet has a nice solid feel, it's good weight to it. Uh, the buckle's engraved with the Heimdaller shark, which I think is fantastic. It matches the raised shark on the logo. Um, I do love their logo. It just adds a bit of fun. I think this watch really is a fun watch. You can't take yourselves too seriously with it. The crown is also engraved, as is the case back. Um, I believe this casework is actually laser etched rather than engraved. So you've got the Heimdaller shark, some of the specs on it as well. 200 meters water resistance on this. So it is totally fine for diving or swimming or going to the beach or whatever you'll do with it. Um, it's plenty strong to take a beating with the, the shroud on it. It's... It's a tool watch. Obviously, I've gone for the lime green dial here. This is my own personal watch. I've had it in my collection for a few years. I love the color. You don't see many watches with this color dial, and that is what made me choose this watch more so than anything else. There were other color options available. There was a there's a white, a black, a yellow, and an orange dial. This is the 2K19 version, and I believe they're currently on the 2K20 version, which is available in those colors as well. As for movement, there's an NH35A, which is a pretty standard movement these days in 
micro brands and factory brand watches. It's a, an absolute workhorse. I have it in a few of my watches. I've never had any issues with them. Um, I've used it myself in mods as well. So it's a, it's a nice movement. Um, some people don't like it, but to be honest, I think it's it's the go-to choice for so many brands and it's just so readily available if there's any issues with it. You can drop a new one in for, you know, $40 maybe. So I think it's it's a great option to go in a, in a cheap watch like this. Due to the size and the, the solid bracelet, the watch is quite heavy. You're definitely not going to forget your iron, like I said with the Momentum video. This is a bit of a beast. I think this is something that will suit broader wrists, but again, the short lug to lug does help. So, as a homage watch, this is probably towing the line slightly between homage and a copy. Um, a lot of naysayers will say this is just a copy of a, a Seiko Tuna, whereas others will say there's enough changed to be its own watch. It's a dangerous game to play, really. Um, one issue that can come from watches that are, are this close is if somebody changed the dial to say Seiko, they could try and pass it off as a Seiko watch. But if you're leaving it with the, the standard setup that it comes with, or if you're changing it to an aftermarket dial that does not say Seiko, there's no issues. I think it obviously doesn't say it's Seiko anywhere. It's It's branded as it is. It's not trying to be something that's not. It's obviously not the most innovative design a watch, but it is a very nice watch. It gets a good bit of wear in my collection. I have a few nicks in it around the place. Um, being so tall, it is in danger of getting a smack of a door handle or the likes. It can take it. It's a tool watch. It's made for, for hard everyday use. So I don't mind giving it a bit of a smack. Now, we'll see how this looks on the wrist. For reference, my wrist is about seven and a quarter inches. There we go. I think it fits quite nicely. 47 millimeters is definitely bigger than I'd usually choose for a watch. But as I said, with the short lug to lug length, it fits quite nicely on my wrist. You can see there's no overhang of the lugs. Um, because the lugs are actually underneath the case rather than extending out, it makes it very comfortable to wear. This is a great one if you've got smaller wrists and you do like larger watches. The issue with that usually is if the lugs are overhanging your wrist. Whatever about if it's on one side and it can be hard to photograph, sometimes it looks like it is when it's not, but if it's hanging over on one side, whatever, if it's hanging over on both sides, it just looks like you've, you're have a little child that's taken his dad's watch or something. No offence to anyone who does wear oversized watches, but that is that is a, a common criticism of wearing watches that are just too large. So something like this is ideal in those situations. Like It is a big watch. You can see there on my wrist it sits quite proud. It's large in diameter, but it does fit on the top of my wrist. And that's the main thing people are looking at. If, it's, if it looks like it's hanging off you, it's not going to sit right. But this... For all its size, just fits very nicely. The strap is quite comfortable. There's micro adjustments on it there, and I do find myself using them. Being so heavy, you don't really want it rattling around, so I have this quite tight at the minute, so it, it stays firmly on my wrist. Um, I do loosen it up when it gets warm, and then tighten it up when it gets cold as my wrist swells with the season change. This watch is an absolute loom monster. I'll just take you into a dark room now to show you what it's like. So as you can see here, the loom is quite strong. I would put this probably slightly below Seiko loom, but only very slightly. The loom on this will last through the night. So anytime you look at the watch, it really does shine through. Um, I always think it's it's nice on any watch to have loom, but I think it's essential if you're marketing it as a dive watch, it must have good loom, and this has it in spades. All the indices are lit up clearly. The hands, including the second hand, are clearly visible at night. 
the pip at the 12 o'clock has also loomed and clearly visible at night. One thing though that does separate this from Seiko watches is the chapter ring, the dial and the bezel insert actually line up perfectly which if you have a few Seikos you know isn't a given with them so it's nice to see a much more budget friendly option lining up absolutely perfectly you can see there it is exactly right which you probably wouldn't get if you bought the real Seiko tuner. Retail for the current model, the 2K20 version, is $179, which is just incredible value. For what you're getting, 200 meter dive watch, NH35A movement, amazing loom, steel bracelet. It's just fantastic. I think you're really going to struggle to get something that has this level of specs. Ceramic bezel insert, sapphire crystal. All of that for $179. I mean, the design mightn't be the most original, but it is just amazing value for money. There's a couple of small issues with this watch. As I've said, the bezel is very difficult to turn. I do use my timing bezels fairly regularly, so it's irritating not being able to use this one without taking the watch off, so I just don't use it. And then the other thing is, you might have noticed this kind of line running around the outside of the shroud. To my eye, it appears to be something to do with the tooling when they cut out the notches in the shroud. See how it, it lines up. Um, I have seen it on a couple of other people's watches in pictures. To be honest, it's something that did bother me at first. I don't really notice it anymore. It's, it's not that visible. It depends on how the light catches it. You may or may not see it. But uh, I did email... Handler about it and, and didn't get a response, so that was disappointing. It's it's uh, disappointing when a brand doesn't respond to your queries. But look, I don't know how busy they are or what they might have missed it. Um, I didn't pursue the matter, so it didn't it didn't affect my enjoyment of the watch. So it's fine with that. One thing I did think about this is while well, I do like the ceramic insert, and um, they sell or at least they used to sell. I'm not sure if they still do a aluminium bezel insert, and I think i'd prefer that and um, i just haven't got around to to trying it yet and um, obviously being a ceramic insert chances are when i pull it out i will almost definitely break it so if i if i decide i don't like the aluminium i wouldn't be able to change back to the black so that's part of the consideration why i haven't changed until now so all in all i'm very happy with the watch it's comfortable for such a large watch it's heavy, but not excessively so. And I love the color. Um, it's definitely a, a divisive color. Um, it's probably my favorite color in general. So as I said, I, I picked this watch based entirely on the dial color. There was hardly any other options at all. And for the specs, I couldn't say no at that price. Um, I will definitely be purchasing more Heimdallar watches. They have some interesting ones there. They have a couple of monsters, which again are homages to the Seiko monster, that are an amazing price and different colors than you could get in the monster. So I would probably pick one of those up um, if you're looking. They have other homages to Seiko watches and they have a nice homage to the Omega Seamaster as well. So I'll definitely pick one of those up in the future. And when I do, I will give it a review. So let me know what you think in the comments. Is it too close to the original to be called the homage? If you like the video, drop a like below and subscribe for more content. Any engagement at all really helps me. So I hope you enjoy this and thanks very much.